Well, good morning, Paul. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, we're glad to see everybody out this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's not snowing. It's not raining. The air is crisp and fresh. And uh, we have a few announcements here. Uh, if you look at your big green sheet, hey, you can't miss that one. Uh, the events this week are all listed in there. Uh, one that's not in there is the last Friday in January, the 27th, is Soup and Sandwich Day. So put that on your calendar. I didn't look at the front. <laughs> I'm looking at the business side. <laughs> and of course, the, uh, the chili cook-off is still about six, eight weeks away, but put that on your calendar. That's the yeah. men's event. It's a fundraiser for the uh, St. John Food Pantry. And uh, half of it will go to the food pantry and half of it will stay here to pay the light bill. Uh, what else did I miss? Paul. Uh, choir will be starting not this Wednesday, but a week from this Wednesday, 6.30, right here. Yeah. Thank you. And the flowers today are donated by Paul Krause in loving memory of Edwin Krause. So, may the peace of our Doug. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Wayne, did you have an announcement? Officers' reports are going to the office, right? Last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that? Officers, committee chairman, uh, annual reports were due in the office last Friday the 6th. All right. Now, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you new. stand with me if you are able for our call to worship today. 
Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the holy splendor. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And let us worship God. Let us join together in singing, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, hymn number 475. <coughs> Today we worship an unknowable God who loves us and calls us by name, Fred, Linda, Nikki, Marlene, your name, who came to meet us in the presence of Jesus Christ. Today we remember Jesus' baptism. Through baptism we enter a covenant God has established in Jesus Christ, and within that covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing the covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. Those who know God and love God are called to righteousness. We are called through God to open the eyes of the blind and establish justice on earth. Yet, we turn time and time again away from the calling. Let us confess our sins to God, our loving and merciful Redeemer. Join me in the prayer of confession and silent prayer. Merciful, Merciful God, God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought or word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Gracious God, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we confess to you in silence. Even when we fail, even when we are not perfect, God still claims us. God still calls us by name. God still places God's spirit upon us. We are known, and we are loved, and we are forgiven. If anyone does sin, 
We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not ours only, also for the sins of the whole world. We hear then Christ's words of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven, and thanks be to God. Let us join to, let us sit down and pray. Almighty God, in this season of Epiphany, you invite us to seek Christ's revelation. In the reading of this scripture today, give us the eyes to see, the ears to hear who Christ is in the Bible and in the world around us. May this knowledge change us. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9, concerning the servant of the Lord. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout out or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In his faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law the islands will put their hope. This is what God, the Lord, says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to his people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison and release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Let us join together in singing our second hymn, number 164, Down Galilee's Slow Road. Oh. 
this, oh, you may be seated. <laughs> the gospel reading this morning is from the third chapter of Matthew. verses 13 through 17, and this scripture goes along with the hymn we just sang, and we'll talk a little bit more about the scriptures and Jesus' baptism in a little bit. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you do come to me. But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he, Jesus, consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Several weeks ago, when at a session meeting we were talking about who's going to fill the pulpit for January and February, I popped in and said, hey, I'll take January 8th. And then a few days later, I remembered a comment that our former pastor Matt had made a time or two, that that is probably one of the toughest Sundays to do a sermon on because there's so many things to choose from. So here we go. Uh, the liturgical calendar pretty much guides our worship services and uh, the one for today, foremost, of course, is the baptism of Jesus. But this is also the first Sunday after Epiphany. Some of us will often ask, and many are asking now, what is Epiphany? Everybody knows what Epiphany is, right? So I don't need to do this part. Oh. Hi. <laughs> All right. Epiphany is sometimes called the baptism of Jesus. Three Kings Day, Little Christmas, Theophany, and many other things. And on the news over the past couple of days, there's been little clips of uh, the Puerto Ricans and all sorts of other groups in their little celebration of Little Christmas. So this shouldn't be news to many of us. The word epiphany is derived from a Greek word epiphania, meaning an appearance or manifestation. And in this case, it refers to the manifestation of Jesus Christ to the world. All right. Epiphany always occurs on the 6th of January. Now figure that one out. January 6th is the 12th day of Christmas. And then you ask, why are there 12 days of Christmas? Well, the answer to that is that's about how long it took the three wise men, the three kings of the Magi, whoever you want to call them, to find where Jesus was born. So there are 12 days of Christmas. And how do we get to the word epiphany? Well, when these three guys discovered Christ's birth site, they said, ah, we have found the long sought after Messiah. An epiphany, a moment of well, they discovered something new, perhaps amazing, that changed the story they were working on. So that's Epiphany. An interesting side story to this is somebody wrote a song about the 12 days of Christmas. And you know me when I'm up here, there's little funny things I can't leave out. <laughs> it's interesting to the note, if you take all the gifts that my true love gave to me, it adds up to 364 gifts. That's one a day until next Christmas. All right, now let's get back to the topic for today, and that's the baptism of Jesus. 
we could ask why was Jesus not baptized as an infant, as many of us are and have been? And the simplest answer to that would lead to the shortest sermon on record. Jesus was Jewish and they did not baptize. <laughs> but let's go ahead and take a look at the characters involved in the baptism event. First, we have an individual that we now know as John the Baptist. In a lot of the reading and studying that I did uh, for today, there is uh, a lot of scholars feel that he should be called John the Baptizer, not John the Baptist, because number one, he wasn't a Baptist, because there were no Baptists back then. A little bit of history there. Uh, Anyway, we do know that John was somehow related to Jesus. We're not quite sure. Uh, we do know that John was three months older than Jesus. That's in the history books. And his mother, Elizabeth, was some sort of a female relative to Jesus' mother, Mary. And the word cousin uh, they were called cousins, and the only place cousin is used in the scripture in the Bible is in Luke uh, chapter 1, verses 36 and 38, where Elizabeth is called the cousin of our Lord's mother Mary. Anyway, we do know that John lived in the desert, in the wilderness, surviving on eating locusts and honey, and he wore camel's clothing. That's in almost all the scriptures. And John loosely followed a group uh, a Jewish group known as the, as the Essenes. Uh, they were a strict Jewish, Jewish sect that existed from about the second century BCE to the end of the first century CE. Now that's not saying he lived that long, but that sect that he followed lasted about that long. John went into the builder, wilderness baptizing folks with water which at that time was an accepted as a symbol of washing away the old sin and making a new beginning toward living a more holy life. Many people throughout the land believed that John was the Savior, the Messiah, that they had been waiting so many years for. John the baptizer is considered uh, by many to be the forerunner to Christianity. Uh, using baptism as the central sacrament of his Messianic movement. And he did not become Saint John the baptizer until he was martyred upon his beheading. So up until then, he was just John the baptizer. But yet Christians consider Jesus to be the one who instituted the sacrament of baptism, not John. Now so much for John. So why do we suppose Jesus chose to be baptized? Huh? We know that John baptized folks with water, open running water. He never did the water sprinkling thing like we do. It was an immersion in a moving body of water. The Christian church has had some problems with the baptism of Jesus for many centuries. And uh, the reason for that is the way it's handled in the four Gospels. They're not all alike. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 32, and by the way, that's not the same John that did the baptism, uh, John testifies that John the baptizer saw the Spirit descend upon Jesus like a dove from above, but makes no mention whatsoever of a baptism taking place. We kind of infer from the descending of the dove that this happened. Luke, in his gospel, chapter 3, verses 21 and 22, portrays the baptism complete with the descending of a dove-like spirit and a voice from heaven who speaks to Jesus but does not tell us that it was John who baptized Jesus. We we'll go to Mark's gospel, chapter 1, verses 9 and following, specifically tells us it was John the Baptist doing the baptism. He tells us of the Spirit descending like a dove and the voice from heaven. 
So we're getting the story of Jesus' baptism excuse me, in bits and pieces. It is only Matthew's version that tells us the whole story. And that was the scripture today, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Matthew tells us everything Mark told us and adds some intriguing details. Matthew is the only writer to mention the Jordan River. So now we know where it took place. Matthew also tells us that the voice from heaven might have been heard by others who were gathered around. And there's one more detail in Matthew's version that stands out clearly. Only Matthew tells us of Jesus' protesting that he is not worthy of baptizing Jesus, and Jesus insists that it be done saying, it is proper for us in this way to fulfill righteousness. So Matthew is the only one of the four scriptures that really gives us the whole picture. This is the answer to Matthew's question, why was Jesus baptized? This one little detail, particularly only to Matthew's gospel, speaks volumes about Jesus, his ministry, and his crucifixion. The baptism of Jesus was unique, but it forms the pattern for our own baptisms. The author of Matthew is, he's always at pains to maintain a Jewish context for the life and ministry of Jesus. Matthew's Jesus reassures John that the baptism is proper and fitting for them to do because John's baptism puts Jesus in the right relationship with God. To fulfill righteousness, and that's in quotes, fulfill righteousness, has less to do with agreeing to a set of correct intellectual assertions. And I had trouble with that there. And far more to do with fostering relationships. And we'll see in a little bit about relationships. Jesus was baptized because God found the ritual pleasing. God, so the rabbis say, uh, chose the children of Israel to show the world how to be in right relationship with God. And so his baptism showed the people that Jesus was right in relationship with God. We keep hearing those words over, the right relationship with God, right? Jesus was baptized because the ritual also brought him into community with all sinners. His baptism put Jesus publicly in right relationship with all humanity, not just God to be our Emmanuel, telling us God truly and really is with us. Jesus' baptism, like his ministry, was unique in many ways, but there's a pattern in God's action through the sacrament of baptism that we share with our brother. Baptism for Jesus was an act of obedience that led to the inception of his mission in his ministry, in the assurance of God's presence. Loyalty to God and persistence in cultivating this relationship to God mark the life and death of Jesus. And because he was the Son of God, the perfect manifestation of the second person in the Trinity, we know that loyalty and persistence in cultivating relationships are the essence of God. Uh, when we were interviewing the person that we believe is going to be our interim pastor, one of the first questions he asked our uh, team, we were supposed to be interviewing him and it turned out I think he interviewed us, was one of his questions, what makes you all Presbyterian? And there were about five blank stares at the table for a minute or two. Here is part of it. Cultivating relationships are the ultimate uh, essence of God. 
Each of us can also claim a unique baptism. And yet there are some commonalities. For one thing, baptism dissolves the delusion that we are separate from God. We are cleansed of the mistaken impression that somehow God is somewhere where we aren't and we are freed from the fear that we are somewhere God isn't. So it brings us together. I find it hard sometimes to trust and accept that we, like Jesus and through Jesus, have been made children of God in our baptisms. And, and I got to thinking back on this. I'm sure most of us in here, I know I was baptized, baptized as an infant. I had no idea what was going on. Uh, do you remember anything? Absolutely not. Uh, and you have to give some thought to what baptism is all about. And that's where we're at here today. Some of us get over-invested in trying to live into our own image of our best selves. For others, the latent power of the gift within us frightens us into shrinking away from our potential. We live in a world that seems to be intent on making us doubt whose children we are. A world that seems to prefer that we stay focused on how far we fall short. But do you recall what happened immediately after Jesus' baptism? Temptation. Temptation. Thank you. The text that follows today's gospel reading tells us that then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Immediately after his baptism, the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into a wild place. More to the point, it was a wild place occupied, occupied by forces that knew exactly how to pressure Jesus to distort his awareness of who he was. Forces that knew the most likely ways to successfully draw him away from God. Do you know what happens to each one of us after our baptism? Basically the same thing. We join Jesus in a slightly different des desert. There's only one S in that. In a slightly different desert filled with forces that seek to discourage us from being who we were created to be. Forces that know the most likely ways to draw us into weakening our relationship with God. Not to test our loyalty to God and not to challenge God's commitment to us. None of that is what the Holy Spirit intends for us. The same spirit that drove Jesus into the desert drives us into a wild place. But you see, that wild place has been changed subtly, profoundly, and forever. Uh, the Spirit takes you and I into the world around us, the world where Jesus has already overcome the forces of temptation for us. What remains of those forces are mere ghosts and shadows. The important thing for us to remember is, in this world, these forces have only the power that you and I grant them. So if we keep our faith and follow Jesus and God, these forces can't get to us. I'll repeat that sentence. We must remember the forces in this world that draw us away from God have only the power that we give them. In addition to what is no longer waiting for it in the wilderness, there's something far more awesome that is waiting for us. And the Spirit takes the newly baptized into the wilderness of this world inhabited by a communion of saints, both living and dead. So we have a lot of help. 
Baptism takes us into the wilderness together with others who are searching for and following God's yearning for them. Baptism is the entry into faith lived in community. Jesus stood at the edge of the river willing to immerse himself in our humanness because it was pleasing to God. Willing to be counted among the wrongdoers and the transgressors because it brought him into solidarity with the human community. And a voice from heaven that claimed him is the same voice that reminds us of both who we are and whose we are. And now, my friends, that's why Jesus was baptized. I need to acknowledge here the, uh, the Reverend John Foreman for uh, I pirated some of his message for today and rewrote it and stuff to fit what we like to do here. So, Michelle gave me all kinds of paper here. Let me find the right ones. One of the things she gave me that I can't find was the prayer list. The bottom page. Oh, it seems to me this list of prayer concerns never gets any shorter, and it sometimes gets longer. So let me go through this with you. Uh, we want to keep in our prayers Laura McLeod, Paul Kraus, who is with us and is doing well. I know he's able to climb stairs and drive, so welcome back, Paul. Uh, keep Kay Collins in our prayers. Uh, I understand she's not doing real well right now. Of course, Mike Matei. Roberta Bird, Ron Reese, uh, Shirley Swithin, Tony Williams, and the Bro Zobrasovic family. Uh, are there prayers or concerns from Drew? I, like, I would like prayers for family members in Rockford. My niece lost her husband to a stroke on Friday night, and my brother-in-law, who is 96, took a bad fall and is in the hospital. Okay, we'll keep your family members in our prayers. Kina. For the joy of our son and daughter-in-law, we ask for Uncle Paul to be in his town and his life be Son and daughter-in-law safely back from Nepal. Yes. Okay, that's good. I see a hand. That's me, friends. I've got a joy. Uh, my daughter that lives in Ohio, Lauren, surprised me yesterday on a visit uh, with a knock on the back door, and I haven't <laughs> seen her in two years. So Whoa, okay. okay. Are there others? Uh, two more hands in the back. Penny. Oh, I have a friend, uh, Sue Brown, going for uh, a biopsy. Okay. Gayla. Okay, if you still have poinsettias here, take them home today. The dumpster is open. <laughs> Wayne. Tiffany, um, Nikki's friend, has, uh, her heart has gone to 50% function and needs prayer. Oh, okay. Wayne, you need to come up here. Please. You thought I was going to forget, didn't you? No, I didn't. <laughs> this, is, this is for you, Wayne. <laughs> Santa, a jolly older Saint Nick, had left this for you after your sermon uh, last year in December, and he says this, I am sorry to have only provided you with underwear and socks <laughs> and your Christmas stockings. Hopefully you will enjoy wearing these around your neck, brightening the corner where you are. Ho, Ho, ho. ho. <laughs> uh, 
let's all join together in the pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Bless us, O oh Lord, for this day, for the ability, the freedom to come to worship you and not have to hide to do it. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given us, for the opportunities for your Son, Jesus Christ. As we go through this day, let us remember all the things that you have given us. And so now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. All right, um, let's do the reaffirmation of baptism. Let me hear. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, eternal God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, today is reaffirmation of baptism Sunday. And. Uh, what we're going to do, instead of water in the baptismal font, there's a bunch of glass rocks. And what we're going to do, uh, following the prayer, we're each invited to come up, come up the center aisle, reach in, take a rock, a glass bead, and... Uh, this is to remind you through the coming days of the renewal of your baptism. Uh, I remember doing this little ceremony, if you will, several times in the Via de Cristo movement my wife and I were involved in. And I still have, we had uh, river stones instead of glass beads. I couldn't get to a river this week. Uh, it was <laughs> partly. And uh, I still have those. Sometimes I carry one of them in my pocket, and sometimes I don't, but they're on top of my dresser. So following the prayer, you're invited to come forward and select a stone from the font that you may carry out into the wilderness. Feel free to carry it in your pocket, purse, or whatever means as a reminder of your renewed baptism. Let us bow our heads. We give you thanks, O God, for the gift of baptism. With the mark of water, we join with Jesus and one another in a cleansing and anointing, claiming and receiving your love, mercy, forgiveness, and grace. When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, he was cleansed by the common element of water. He was anointed in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You, O oh God, claim Jesus as your Son, the Beloved. You poured upon him your Holy Spirit, empowering him to love and serve you in his life and in his death. In this same water, those of us gathered here were also baptized. Each of us is loved, claimed, and empowered by you. Amen. So if you would rise, come up, pick a stone. If you would a stone and you're not able to come up, holler and Dale or I will get one to you. And they're colored. You can pick the color you want. I gotta get back up the down. I got it here. <laughs> I haven't walked enough yet today.
Thank you for the fake water, amen. <laughs> All right, uh, the offertory sentence. Apostle Paul writes, give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all the many blessings that you have given us for time, talent, and treasure. At this time, please accept and bless a portion of our treasure as we now generously return some of it to you for your work. Amen. Let's all join together and sing hymn number 634. 